A very good evening from the live lounge here in Portsmouth, where Group B is about to get underway here at the Super Series. And what a super afternoon session we saw here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Let's reflect upon some of the best bits now. As for Mark Graham, it was a couple of points from his opening day here at the Super Series. The Welshman will be looking to make a bit of a push on day two. Meanwhile, for Kenny Nayans, he often unlucky at times, played one in patches but didn't pick up the points. Again, like Graham, a couple of points to his day. As for Stephen Johnston, well, he's getting better as the days go on, and he treated us this 167 checkout and treated us to some celebration as well. As for James Richardson, he won each of his opening three matches of the day. However, he lost his final two. He finds himself on six points, part for the course after the opening day's play. As for Jason Ashley, it's the first time we've seen him here in Portsmouth, the man who held the record average back in Southampton. And again, a three and two day. But the man to prize apart at the top of the table is Alexander Merckx. He seems to be a player. Every time he comes into the Super Series, improves as the week goes on. So that is what we saw this afternoon. Chris Mason was in the commentary box for all of the action. He joins us up here on the balcony. Now, let's begin with Alexander Mertz, because what a session that was for him. Yeah, he's, he, like you say, he seems to improve. He, he's got winning form here. He's won a week before. Uh, played OK in Group A. Just sort of lost his way in the scoring phase of matches. But not today. Every aspect of his game was on point. The scoring, and especially the finishing, and the three-figure checkouts. Well, let's break down that session then numerically by having a look at that Group C session by the numbers. So 85 legs played. We saw that 167 from Johnston. But when you look at the overall checkout rate and overall average, it represents a real good standard. Yeah, anything, anything over 85. I mean, that's, that's the overall average for all of the players combined. A high of 101.15. We did see another 100-plus average, of course, in the session and the finishing. The, the, the par is sort of 33%, isn't it? One from three. Anything above that uh, is deemed quality. And, yeah, best leg of the day. We had a couple of 11s and the highlight for Johnston, no doubt, one that will go in his highlight reel. I'm sure all of his friends and family have been sent that by now. A beautiful 167 and a great day for him. Absolutely, and 30 maximums as well, which was very good as far as the scoring is concerned. Let's have a look then at the table following the first day's play in Group C. As you can see, Alexander Merckx at the top of the table, but below that, it is all to play for. Yeah, absolutely. The, the top four bunched up nicely. Uh, tomorrow should be a, a great session. Uh, you'd be a brave man to, to pick a winner out there. The, 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 more, the one that's inexperienced is Stephen Johnson, but he, he's playing on the crest of a wave and, and enjoying himself up there. At times today, James Richardson looked irresistible. Uh, yeah, it's wide open. Nayans and Graham, you know, if this was a group A being played over three sessions, you wouldn't completely write them off. But, yeah, they, they, they mathematically can get through, but very, very unlikely. We'll be watching that action tomorrow from one o'clock here at the Super Series. Two players will be joining Luke Littler in Saturday night's final, who won his place courtesy of Group A on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. But it is Group B that's going to get underway this evening. It's going to be headlined by the likes of Nathan Gervin and Alex Spellman, who made their way from Group A. And we're also going to see the return of a man who made it through to the final of the Champions Week last time out in Adam Mole. We've also got Richard North in the mix. We will certainly hear from him as the night goes. <laughs> On, that is for sure. Let's have a look then at what the bookmakers think about this group. Alex Spellman going off the 5-2 to two favourite. Is that because he was top of Group A for so long? Yeah, I think he's been a, a surprise package. I think he shocked us all to the, the, the levels he played at and, and the players he was beating and convincingly. Uh, I certainly wouldn't have him favourite for this group. It's a different dynamic to this group than, than the one he played in. Uh, over the course of Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. It'd be very hard to, uh, to ignore Nathan Gervin at 10 to 3. He was outstanding across Tuesday and Wednesday, winning eight of his 10 games. And that was off the back of losing all of his matches on Monday. And, and Wednesday, he played beautifully all day. When you consider Adam Mould has got through Group B every single time he's played in that group, he's made it through to Saturday night every single time he's played here. Is that 72 possibly the bookmaker's value? Yeah, I, I would say so. Listen, he's a, he's a proven winner over a course and distance. Uh, he, won't, he won't feel threatened by anybody else in the group. And, yeah, that, that could be one of those that might come out of the pack. And those odds will change. To, trust me, when we have a look at this tomorrow, they'll be totally different. Indeed. Talking about the odds, your ace is came in a bit earlier on, it didn't did, it? It did, yeah. Oh, I did tell you. 
You see, he's good. He's good, isn't he? <laughs> Let's have a look and see what tonight has. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to bet, otherwise it'd have been really good. <laughs> You wouldn't be stood here, would <laughs> <No>. you? <laughs> right, this is what you got tonight. You got a bit more ambitious, so you got a bit confident. Four to one's moved into eight to one. Yeah, I, I, basically, I, th I think because of Adam, uh, Alex Spellman playing all week, he, he's coming into this hot. We always see the players coming in for the first time, whether it be in C or B, that haven't played in Group A, tend to take a bit of time to get going. So uh, I'm, I'm expecting Spellman to get out of the blocks quickly, hence that first bet. Uh, the second bet, Gervin and Blades, I think that's got six, seven legs in it. 180s all over the place in that one. And then North versus Gervin again. Uh, Richard North over 0.5. So just to hit 1180 in the match, again, I can see that going six, seven legs possibly. And it pays over seven to one. Indeed. So if you're going to have a flutter, 18 plus, BigGamblerWare.org and maybe follow Aces Acker to do exactly that. Well, the first match of our evening sees Adam Mould in action. He takes on Nathan Gervin. Ten matches for you this evening here at the Super Series. We're looking forward to them very much so indeed. Chris Mason's going to make his way down to the commentary box to join Matthew Edgar for all of the action. Hello, Matt. Evening, Henry. Thank you. Evening, everyone joining us for some Group B action. Uh, New group this week getting underway with three places available for Saturday night's final. A place where Adam Mould, the man throwing the darts right now, has been many times before in the past. He's had some good success down here at the Super Series and been playing quite a lot of his trade over on the PDC Challenge Tour recently. Did attend Q School this year, looking to take that next step in his game and has reached the last 32 on the Challenge Tour. Nathan Gervin the 20-year-old looking to take a step further in his career. And he's had quite he's a had him to throw first. successful career so far, certainly Game in on. the youth side of darts. He's <laughs> twice played in the BDO youth final, losing to Justin Van Ter Howe and Leighton Bennett. But he also, just last year, 100. made another world final when he got through to the PDC World Youth Final, going down to, like most people did last year, Josh Rock. 57. Yes, it was, uh, it was one of those performances as well that was irresistible from Josh Rock. I think he averaged 104 in the end. He, 60. It spelled, in spells in that final, unplayable. Of course, that was on, on stage uh, down at Minehead. What Big arena, that one as well, Sorry, isn't 140. it? Fifty-seven. Score there. It was a 140. Just for full clarification. 100. I wouldn't be surprised to see some 180s from Nathan Gervan, though. I think the way he played this week, he's hit 17 180s in his Group A campaign, but he really grew into the 80. week. He started off with an 82 average, then he went to an 88. Yesterday, went up to a 90, and... I think towards the back end 92. of yesterday's play, it's probably some of the best starts I've seen from Nathan Gervin. Yeah, he's not, he's not the greatest season so far. And this, of course, is the ideal 100. hunting ground just to, car 112. just to reapply yourself and iron out any issues. Can still finish. Needed the 57. Needs to stay switched on. That's a little unfortunate. Adam your car 104. Old finding the trouble 72. next door. Nathan Car 66. Both with trouble, trouble. Double 12. Game shot on the first leg. Nathan Gerban. Great finish and a break of throw in leg one. It's interesting you mentioned about Nathan Gervin having an opportunity here to iron things out because on the Nathan very first conversation first. we had this week, I was up on the balcony and I said that Nathan Gervin this time last year was 81. looking like he was going to be the next breakthrough star. Certainly one of those people that you'd put into the almost certainty category to go and get a PDC tour card, but sort of lost his way a little bit towards 100. the back end of the year. And Yeah, I, th I think he found, I, I think he was a little bit, well, he just sort of lost his, just lost 100. his way a little, I think. And that's that, that, it's such a tough environment. And he did get a couple of invites, of course, to the Pro Tour, where he lost to 
Adrian what? Lewis averaged 100, hit a nine darter, and then lost a, another couple of uh, odd matches by the the odd leg. I remember Mark in one of his games. He played Michael Smith. It was a really good game of darts. I think he went like 6-4, and yeah. again, around the 100 average mark. So he knows where his level's at, and yeah, and he, he took that defeat to Josh 100. Rock. Very hard. You know, that's his third youth world final, and nobody felt like it was going to be his time. Does still have a few years yet on the PDC 77. side of the youth tour, 20 years 21. old, that gives him... Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I've had the conversation with him. I don't. I don't personally think he's ready. But fifty-seven. Nathan Carr, one hundred and forty-six. How he feels is what's important. I'm gonna give you the big question. And you can answer it in the next leg, so it gives you a second to think about it. What do you think is the big key quality that would make someone ready? What's the main thing you need to see in somebody? That's weird. Looking at top thread and mould. 44, for a level Nathan game. 16. For Gervan to continue that upwards trend. Two eights, two legs. Game shot on Good the switch second over leg. the board there Nathan for Nathan Gervan. Gervan. And it'll be quite important for him after ending his campaign with five straight wins to start this one well because this is a clean Little slate. Those five first. wins he got game on Wednesday have no relevance on Group B. Yeah, for me, it's there's well, there's, there's wow, many elements. Faulty. One's maturity, which will allow you to deal with disappointment. The resistance to becoming 85. too disappointed by results not going your way, which is why I think players do mature 96. a lot older in terms of success. And that is vital. The being able to deal with disappointment because I'm, I'm not going to say the Rocky Balboa line, I've said it enough but in regards to that, the PDC Pro Tour is the best players from Belgium, the best players from Germany, best players from Holland, the best players, wherever those players are coming from, they are the best at where they're from and you're taking the best and putting them to a room and essentially putting them in a format that's going to generate at some point throughout the day 127 losers because there'll only be one winner and that's of the best players from all these different nations, countries, locations. And how do you go from 16. being the best to being one of? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, the conversations I've had with him, 16. although the, the dev tour I'm is car, very difficult because there's so many good youngsters that have tour cards, um, which is a, another topic. Yeah, he's the Adam Old in Adam 15. Mold. Gets a hold, a hold for mold. Um, yeah, and I think you've got. I think you need to prove yourself on each of the levels. So go through, you know, being fourth like Nathan to throw in the first. top. Game on. Certainly the top two of the Dev Tour, and then even maybe ninety-two being right up there on the Challenge Tour would then suggest to me you are ready for the the rigors of the Pro Tour, which is just it's, no one's dominating 41. it because it's. It is so ruthless. You know, years ago when when it first started, you, you, know, you, might, you might get an easy, easy first round. There's, there's no not really such thing. Sort of darts in general, now, is it on the travelling sort of circuits now? The depth in darts has never been so strong. We see that in terms of people like Andrew Gildin in the 40s winning the UK Open recently. Yeah, 60. Well, I think the last seven UK, UK Opens have been seven different winners. One of the other systems is that challenge tour, 80. which is something we're seeing Adam Mould playing his trade on this year. He's had a couple of decent wins. I think the one that really stands out for me here is It'd have to be 45. a close call between Scott Baker and Pete Hudson. Pete Hudson just lost his PDC tour card last year, dropping onto the challenge tour. And Scott Baker, someone we see down here quite regular. 60. Very, very Nathan high Carl, level. 164. And I think you've got to develop a, a real high quality B game as well to be... 132. To be successful on the tour. And that's not necessarily win pro tours, but... <clears throat> if you 
100. You know, if you Nathan dip below a certain level, you. which happens from time to time, that that lower level has still got to be Being shot on the at, a, at a level Nathan that Gerber. can win you games. And we see that a lot from players here because that's why they don't have tour cards because they do not have a B game. It's very much the A this game got him to or game on. Z, A to Z. But what we're seeing a lot with players and the more that what I'm down here and the more I'm seeing a lot of the younger generation come through, I would challenge that even further and I'd say it's either the A game 56. or C rather than Z. Yeah. And C stands for sulk. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. that's even in winning. Yeah, they yeah. could play that C game, that 39. sulking game, and still not be happy. Yeah, the crying game. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and it is, it's, a, it's a strange 84. dynamic that's evolved in the sport where well, it's like most things in life. People are easily influenced and they, they look around them and want everything yesterday without necessarily putting in the hard yards. And There's one of those, one of those inspirational social media sites is that one isn't there where the jugglers at the top of the stairs juggling the plates and all people see is the juggling the plates they don't see the the trail of smashed plates all the way to get him to that point you can juggle yeah I like that. 100 that's a great analogy One hundred. How do you call forty? We were discussing across Group A the overly aggressive release. Getting shot on the fifth leg. Nathan, Adam we had the final dart, which found the required target, was thrown very smoothly, and this is a smooth performance so far from Adam Mould, averaging ninety-one. Six leg Nathan to through first. Game on. One hundred. Biggest leg of the match. Such a short 58. format, the first to seven, but this group B, you only play the eight matches. Imperative. You try and get off to a good start to give yourself 100. just a little bit of breathing space. Especially in a lineup like we've got tonight where I don't see like a proper alpha sort of player. Yeah, it's a to to totally different dynamic to Group A, isn't it? There's no one in here you think it's going to really sort of dominate proceedings here. On the base of what we've seen so far this week, you've got to keep an eye on Alex Spellman, who will be coming up in our next game, the American. Yeah, I think eight points in this type of group will be there or thereabouts. Well, more than. So I'd just be breaking it down and thinking, right, two wins tonight. 45. Two wins tomorrow night. Once you get the two wins early, you can really start to express yourself up there and really have a go. What are like I said there'd be 180s. Nathan, I didn't 64. expect them all to be from Adam Old. Go ball here. 64. Adam Yukar, 183. Yeah, 180 from Adam Mould is third of the match. He does have this quite sizable barrel at the bottom end, and it's not causing him any problems in filling 55. up the treble Nathan 20. Car 100. It's a bit of a long priestly dart, isn't it? So Gerben leaves Adam himself handy, but he needs Adam Mould to pass this opportunity. Two darts, and history would tell us that that's enough. He's hit two out of his three visits so far. 32. The most important Nathan one. Yukar, he's missed, as you can see the reaction. He is fuming. Should be 3 3, and he should be throwing for the match. My only worry for Nathan was Game he made such match. a slow start Nathan to his campaign Miller. in Group A and got bogged down with defeats. Not so in this one. Eventually, just about gets over the line. 4 2 against Adam Mould. 88, 96, the average. That's a, an indication of the form Adam Mould is in. He will be one to watch on the back of that tonight. 50% on the doubles for Nathan and an average of 80. Up next, Gary Blades and one of the star performers in Group A, Alex Spellman.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Nathan Gervin has got his campaign off to a perfect start. Getting the better of Adam Mole by four legs to two in our opening game of the evening here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Next up for us is a first appearance of the week for Gary Blades in action here at the Super Series. He takes on Alex Spellman who came so close to Group A glory on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. But what is Thursday going to bring for the American you are going to find out in the company of Chris Mason and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Henry. First look of the week here at Gary Blades, a player who's had a PDC Tour card in the past and did just last year have a big run on the PDC Pro Tour as well, reaching the semi-final and beating a certain Michael Van Gerwen along the way. He's going to have his work cut out for him here. He's got a hands full job on his case with Alex Spellman who we've seen over the first couple of days 17 180s across his three days of action and an average of 87 on Monday 87 on Tuesday and 87 on Wednesday so I think it's safe to say that he's going to be averaging around about the 87 mark Gary Blades has been applying his trade this year on the PDC Challenge Tour and it's got some sizable wins on that one as well. Jack Main, an ex-PDC Tour card holder. Rhys Colley, who we saw here last week. He's also beat Adam Hunt, Michael Warburton. First like he's Gary to throw first. William Borland. Game on. He's having a bit of a tasty season. He's a county player as well. Yeah, it's a bit of a hit list, isn't it? That's 84. A very unusual dart. Yeah, he's always thrown a bit of a more of a novelty sort of dart. He used to throw the the old Robin dart, which was a a Loxley dart, which was based on an arrowhead. Oh, wow. Forty one. Do you like the shirt of Gary Blades as well? That symbol just reminds me of the old, late, great Razor Ramon. 66. It's one of those nicknames, though, that make a bit of sense, isn't it? Gary Razor Blades. Yeah, I like it. At least it... 57. Yeah, at least it, it, it's got something about it. And the fact he's got no hair as well just caps <laughs> off the illusion. Marketing dream, that. 100. Remember Chris Wickerden last week? He, he's not seen a razor blade for some time. Oh, that's for sure. A bit 78. Of a poor start so far. An experiment threatening to break through really early. And that would be, if I had to say, as someone who knows Gary, if he has a weakness, it is that he likes to get in a fight with himself. And the thing is, whenever you fight yourself, even when 85. you're winning, you're losing. Yeah, I commentated on him before and. He just progressively gets better and better. And there we go, almost from absolutely nowhere. That's hard to play because you, you, you don't get too much of a read on your opponent's levels. And I think that was very much what Alex Spellman was doing in, in Group A. I don't think people expected him to be as good as he was. Um, and we didn't when we looked at all the data available on him. 65. But we'll find out whether Alex he car, overperformed or played to type. 68. Game shot on the first leg. Alex Spellman. Break is in in leg one. Very much like Nathan Gervin in our opening match. Interesting news today. Filtering... Second leg, through Alex, to throw first. Game on. The PDPA have now brought in a hypnotherapist for the players. Fantastic. Really, really good on the PDPA. Do like it when there's sort of these... 81. I don't know if I want to call it new methods, but more open to other methods. And I hope that the players engage 59. with this and that the players use it for its full potential. How often do we sit here and commentate on players and they they may not have a flaw in terms of 30. technical ability, but psychologically is, is where they lose matches. 
and I think this is a really good step forward for the sport. 135. I, think, I mean, personally, I think the best way to really heighten the sport is to have a purpose-built venue centrally in the UK. Yep. And that way you can even monitor things such as the food because at the moment events are played in leisure facilities which traditionally will serve hot dogs, burgers, pasties. It's very, very hard to get something of sort of good substance when you're out of the tournaments. No, I agree. I agree. It's something that we've discussed many times in ter terms of not only the psychological approach to the sport, but also the physical side to it. 64. I'm a great believer in just small increments in, of improvements. Tiny percentages make up a, a huge slice of the pie. 60. And this is a, a good improvement, a good step forward from the PDPA. If you're not sure what the PDPA is, that's the Professional Dart Players Association, which to play on the PDC you have to be signed up to. It's a sort of like 85. a player's representation. Yeah, 170. Yeah, they're there to safeguard the players and advise them. And... 40. Ali Shukar, 160. I was actually on the board for a couple of years. It was very interesting. Another one of those for tops. Eighty-four. Got your car. One hundred and thirty. Let me get an opportunity to. Oh, double five. One hundred and twenty. I'll sit car down with Alex Spellman after his experience here, just to just to get some feedback and how he feels it have, has benefited him. His week far from over, of course. Could well go on to 48. win it. Saturday night, we've certainly Park seen an, enough from him over the course of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to know Game that he's the leg. Gary Blades. got plenty of ability and plenty of bottle. The amount of times he was winning matches with those real clutch finishes. The I bet he's first. got a lot of interesting stories being a computer game developer working on a game such as Fortnite. One of the most popular games of our recent generation. 46. But let's go for story time, shall we? Let's go, let's go into a story with Gary Blades. So this was in the old venue in Southampton. Me and Gary Blades was on the same session together. We've gone out for a oh, yeah, I love this. <laughs> gone out for a bit of food, and we sat down and we, we there was about five of us that played the session and we was messing around with a bit of hot sauce. And the guy behind the counter says, "Oh, that's not the hottest sauce we do." And he brought out a bit of hot sauce, and everyone's having a dip in it, and the burning the mouths off. I stayed out of it. I was just encouraging everybody else to do it. Gary Blaze gets a chip and swirls it around. Whoa, because no, if you're no, going to no, have it, you might as well do the lot. And he swirls it all around so it's covered. And he puts it in. And within seconds, it's burning his mouth. He runs up 58. and he gets a beer from the counter and necks it. And then he stands there and goes, no, that didn't do it. Gets another one. He ended up with three beers just to get the, the burning 82. sensation out of the mouth. So it's safe to say that Gary Blaze is not a fan of the old hot sauce. Can't fault his commitment. 95. Yeah, he said there's no point doing half measures, and he went fully into it. I then tried to get him to do it again, and we went back a few months later, and he weren't having it. And he said he'd do it if I did it, and I tried every trick in the book. 127. And he watched me like a hawk. He knew what I was going to be up to. I was that one that takes everybody else to do it and stayed out of it myself. 52. You can see what he can see from that beautiful 12. shot. Got your car 167. Seeing this today. Um, Stephen Johnston, our ADC qualifier. 93, Alex Ucar, 40. Continued the trend. All oh, the breaks of throw. Level 10. 20. Got your car, 74. And this would be a hold that feels like a break. Yeah, agreed. 
This is where I'm having that sort of transparent Huge flight can help a little Got bit as well. Because it, although the obstruction's there in terms of material, you can still see through. Disappointing start so far. Fourth leg, Alex to through first. Oh, Game Spelman. on. Spellman. in that leg as well, but multiple darts at a double. The break and lead 2 1 himself. 100. <laughs> 70. There he is having that fight with himself on the back of the stage. Expect to see that through the night. 96. We'll be seeing these players three more times tonight. Four fixtures each. 58. Then we return back tomorrow for the conclusion of the group where we'll know our full lineup for Saturday night's final. And don't forget, you can come and join us on Saturday night. You can go to dartshop.tv to get your tickets, or you can scan the QR code up on your screen. That'll take you through with all the information you need so you can be sat on those what tables. You can just see over the shoulders now of Alex Spellman. Yeah, real new, unique experience down here in the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. 100. Plenty of places to stay if you want to make a weekend of it. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Action underway at 7.30. 96. Alex Ucar, 100. We already know Luke Littler's there. He went through on legs, stopping this man, Alex Spellman, who was on level points. Well, it was Stephen Johnston, wasn't it? It was... 80. He'd have had a win Can in that final 97. game against Stephen Johnston. It would have been Alex Spellman through. Ooh. 77. Creative. Alex Ucar, 20. Double, double attempt from Razor Blades. Game shot of the we fourth back level once Alex again. Spellman. We started off with two breaks. We've now had two holds. Back over to you, Gary Blades. What's the trend going to be this time? Fifth leg, Gary, to through first. Game on. Spellman just doing that sort of phantom throw at the back of the stage. Yeah, maybe 39. trying to just loosen up and get rid of any nerves. Did speak to him directly after Wednesday's defeat to 46. Stephen Johnston, which put Luke Littler through to the final on Saturday night. And... He was fairly pragmatic about the 59. whole thing. He said, Look, it's all about Saturday night. And I've now got Group B to come through. But wasn't dwelling on it. He was very much... It what is what it is. is it? Yeah, it doesn't strike me as the sort of character that would dwell on things too much. We saw from the very start his interview and then after Monday, Henry managed 85. to catch a word with him which is available still on the... Modus Super Series YouTube channel, if you want to check that out. And he speaks very fondly about having a strong mentality in this sort of environment because he's got to be switched on from the start. Just that everybody who's playing here is a good, solid player. Yeah. What are the names? Heard, well, I'm rightly so. We've heard so much about Luke Littler and his undoubted ability. Just to, to echo those sentiments, he had to rely on a result going his way to win the group. And it was almost a, regarded as a Gary foregone Carl, conclusion. He was, he was a massive favourite to just win that Group A, wasn't he? He was odds on to win Group A, which is something I can't ever recall seeing before. 41. Alex Ucar, 100. Ultimately, it was right. They, the winner they thought would win one. But is that tempting enough to keep him on the treble? It is. The way his darts land a bit flat, that 60. was just one just Gary to put on top. But he's caught the flight. And it's pulled it a bit low. Different route this time for Gary Blades. Another dart of the double. Double 18. 79. 
Alex, you look at our Just come inside. And is this the moment that Alex Spellman now takes a grip on this game of darts? This is the kind of situation in Game's Monday's group the where Alex he flourished. Spellman. Punishing missed opportunities and taking control. All the players will be feeling a, Six leg Alex a little edgy first. in their opening matches. Up next, our fifth player in this group, Richard North. He takes on Adam Mould, who I was... Did lose. I was impressed with him. It's three one eighties, an average of over eighty eight. Eighty. Eight points more than his opponent, Nathan Gervan. He just lost those key exchanges at the wrong times. Yep. If you're trying to get a read average wise as well on Gary Blades, 16. we know what Alex Spellman's gonna do. He's done it every single day so far. He's averaged eighty seven. But well, Gary Blades, when we look at his running average, this is a running 100. average as well, to remind you, over 12 months. This is 12 Shall I have months. have a guess? Of... Go on, have a go. 84. Very close. 83.67. That's a sample of 12 months of darts. That includes anything such as Q School, WDF tournaments, when they might have a Darts Connect system in place, the Challenge Tour events. So a sizable amount of game of darts. Oh, so yes, any, anything official that's got a an ability like Dart Connect and Dart Atlas to record the average officially. 133. He does go to some ADC events. He does love his darts, does Gary 100. Blades. But he might Alex have to wait 34. a little bit more to be able to throw some more in competitive action because it's double 17. For Alex Spellman to end this match. It'll be the third. Oh, I was going to say it'll be the third time we've seen it this week. Game shot. As it is, Spellman, Spellman finishes the match off with the best leg of the contest: a 15 dart hold, a 4-2 win, and a below par performance. Not an 87 this time, an 83-72, but it was more than enough for a 4-2 win. The average affected massively, of course, by so many missed darts at doubles. When we come back, Richard North will be facing Adam Mould.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Alex Spellman has got the better. Gary Blaze by four legs to two, meaning that the two victories of the night have been 4-2 by the player on the right-hand side of the bracket. Now, if that happens another 18 times in this group, we may well see a nine-dart shooter. It probably isn't going to happen, but our job is to make sure that we cover all bases and all eventualities. Well, third up for us, it's Richard North in action. He's the last player we're yet to see this week here at the Super Series. He takes takes on Adam Mould, who lost 4-2 to Nathan Gervin in his opening match of the night. In the comms box, here's Chris and here's Matt. Thank you, Henry. Well, I was I was impressed by Adam Mould. Stuck in there, didn't quite go his way. Had an opportunity to level things up. But it's been a while since we've seen Northy. Age 32, was he? Top 32 player. High ranking of 32. Seriously talented player, but never quite sure what ver version of Richard North we're going to get. First leg is Richard to throw first. All of you watching at home. Game on. Hopefully, a very good one. And. Welcome along to the action. 55. Oh, I don't think I've seen these darts before. He does have a chop and change, doesn't he, Northy? He does. He changes a lot. 60. Just not getting settled with equipment, and he's one of those that moves around a bit. I do believe... 26. These are the ones I think he might have used last time. I think they might be a Susan Smith dart. Okay. Don't be surprised, though, if he changes from these at some point tonight. Forty-four. Back tons. Oh, sorry, sixteen to one forty. Sixty. So the next score should be a one forty. One hundred and forty. Sixty. Forty-five. This is the first time we've seen Richard North tonight, and he is the last player you're going to see who is different this week. So by the end of this 100. match, you would have seen the weekly winner. You're not still not straying away from Little Ari. He was your fancy at the start. 61. And it's not an exciting pick, I know, because he's the big favourite to win it, but I think I would rather be right than exciting. And at the moment, I've not seen anything to make me think Age otherwise. The first but leg. Adam Mould. Adam Mould takes a break of throw and stamps a bit of authority on this one. 2nd leg, Adam to throw first. Game on. One hundred. One hundred and twenty three. Little unlucky. One hundred. Player with a real 58. fast acceleration from the end of the backswing, pushing through. 60. More control in the forward motion of Adam Mould. 
121. Hitting back well, though, in leg two is Richard North. 12358 and 121. 100. Adam Mould, steady away. Straight out of the 20 segment. Ton, 64. Ton, 60 ton. Adam Yukar, 141. Sixty-four. Richard Ocar, one hundred and thirty-five. We'll start on the bullseye here. Twenty-five for trouble. Twenty. Bullseye gives him options. It's a little bit awkward. I kind of wanted him to get the trouble twenty to see how he'd have addressed that bullseye. Because he had it completely blocked. Yeah, and they're they're not thin darts, are they? Those we've already seen a couple of big deflections. Fifty-seven. Richard Ocar, forty-eight. Double it. Game shot on the second leg. It's Richard a level game. Much better leg there for Richard North. 17 data to wrestle back the advantage of throw. Third leg, Richard to throw first. Game on. Had a mould with the opportunity to lead 2 0. I mean, 26. Have seen anything here that would strike any kind of fear? Into him with regards to this game. One hundred and twenty one. One hundred and twenty one. One hundred and thirty four. Think an average similar to the one he produced in defeat would be 100 more than enough to win this tie. 117. 60. Adam McCarr, 129. Well, just like in the opening leg when Richard North thrown first, he's been outscored here by Adam Mould. 42. And that just makes it a little bit tricky. 87 is one of those awkward shots where you might end up on the ball. Congratulations to Garwin Price. 56. Up a Adam McCarr, 87. Title in this campaign. He's playing phenomenal darts at the minute, well, isn't he? Going into the final. Fifty-five. Not mistake. Richard Ricard, I'm not making it up. His average after the quarters and semis was 112. He averaged 116 and 108. Fifty-eight. Adam Ricard, 32. Absolutely stunning form. He defeated Michael Smith in the final. Please. No score. Michael Richard Smith, Ricard, 80. next week, first game. Over in Rotterdam. 50. That's a bit like the dart on the bullseye where he's 60. blocking up the target, Adam which is why 32. you have to see him shimmy across the hockey to the left-hand side to open that one up. Adam Mould, who's already missed Getting a shot handful the at leg. this target. Adam Mould. Uses it to regain the lead in a breakathon. Fourth, I got him to throw first. Game on. Richard North opted not to go to Q school this past year. We originally thought it was going to be him just playing the Super Series and his Super League and county stuff. 139. But he did venture up to Scotland to take part in the WDF Scottish Open, a silver-ranked event 59. on their system. 
and we actually made it through the semi-finals. Ended up losing out to Martin Atkins, the Wigan version of Martin Atkins, because <laughs> you either get Martin Atkins or Martin Atkins in brackets Wigan. Wigan. <laughs> who? Who? Um, I remember who went on to win that. Event. Fifty-eight. It was Jordan Brooks. That's right. Remember that because it was the week after he left the Super Series. He did a good performance down here. Forty. Well, this is very much a breakathon at the moment. Had three consecutive breaks, and it's looking like ninety-five. A false. Carries on like this. Adam Mould wins. 60. Although, may have given him a bit more interest only seeing a 60 land from Northy. 100. Richie Lucar, 128. 88. Adam Lucar, 148. And one of those shots, isn't it? The 128. You're in a bit of a dilemma if you hit the treble. 100. <laughs> Richard Lucar, 40. Do you go double double, or do you stay there, or do you go 42 32? Game shot on the four flag. Richard Can anyone off. hold their throw? <laughs> All four legs breaks. And this is. The sort of like body first. language and Game ambience on. you get when no one can hold their throat, it, it, you end up with two disappointed players because they'll feel like they both should be winning. One out of yep. 40. Nathan Gervin up next against Gary Blades. 100. 140. 180. Good first of the match. We're going to get a hold of throw. One hundred and eight. <laughs> like buses. Keep thinking. Yeah. Cause Cancel that. <laughs> Richard North's got to take this 81. The mole did the Game exact the same route. Right. And we Richard have our North. first hold of throw. Possibly. One of the most important times. Because he's put himself a leg away from winning this one. Both players taking out the 81. And both players taking out Six the like exact the first. same Game route. On. One hundred and twenty one. One hundred. Fifty nine. The averages have slowly increased throughout the Duration of the match. Both players now averaging just shy of 86. One hundred and twenty-one. Crafting hard now is that a mould? One needs to. Eighty. One hundred and forty. Ninety-two, Adam Ucar, sixty. We're waiting for a hold, you might end up with two. Bit of a blocker. Just to work around it. Forty. It's a sort of Richie game Ducar, you feel as sort of four three either way written all over it before it even started. Yeah. One 
58. Adam, you've got 20. And that's the way it will go if Adam Mould can convert this 20 points. Oh, a bit of a flyer there. Moves down to the double seven. Yeah, horrible double this. Now he can attack it. 13. See that Richard Ucar, 48. Well, he blew the opportunity to level things up against Nathan. I think he's just blown his opportunity to level things up here. Game shot on the match. North Richard finds North. the double 16 with his final dart to get the win. Full two. Averages very close. 84 bang on for Northby. 84 93 for Adam Old. Both players having one 180 apiece. And a lot of missed doubles there for Adam Old. Just two from 11. Far more efficient, Richard North. Four from six. 66.67%. Up next, Nathan Gervin takes on Gary Blades. This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where before the break we saw Richard North get the better of Adam Mould by four legs to two. But that 4-2 win came on the left-hand side of the bracket, so I'm afraid to inform you that any hopes of a nine-dart shootout have now been dashed in Group B. Well, next up for us, it is Nathan Gervin action. He takes on Gary Blaze. Gervin, a 4-2 winner. Gary Blaze losing 4-2 in their opening matches. Watching this one on the Gummidge Box, Chris and Matt. Thank you, Henry. Oh, it was a winning start for Nathan. A little slow out of the blocks, but got there in the end with a 4-2 win against Adam Mould. This man went down to Spellman 4-2. A match that had four 180s in it, two apiece. Nathan didn't hit one in his opening match. We expect a, a couple here. It is the two to five favourite, seven to four about Gary Blades. And if this was football, we'd probably ask one of them to change the shirts because they're the <laughs> same sort of colours. So just to differentiate a little first bit. Like Nathan, to through first. Nathan Gervin is the one with the hair. <laughs> Game on. <laughs> One hundred and forty. Great start. One hundred and eighty. Even better start. Greater start. Yeah, you would think the the aerodynamic quality, aerodynamic qualities of those darts would be forty-five compromised with so much weight to the rear of the dart. But wow. Ninety-nine. They work for him. I'm not sure I could throw them. No, and that's one of the things as well, isn't it? The equipment has to be suitable to the player's 42. throw. Yeah, absolutely, and grip. Or grip pattern, should I say. And you can see he holds the point, uh, holds the barrel right at that point where there's a tiny little scallop at the back. 52. The other thing that he has is he has that sort of wrist and elbow, not in a straight line. It's coming at a very angled 174. line, which is just going to cause him to almost chop the dart rather than throw it. Yeah. You'd see it there really good from that front angle. 134. Which is just why he gets that little bit of kick 100. on the dart, and it's sort of point to the right, flight to the left. Yeah, because it's still rotating, isn't it? I don't blame 60. him for staying Gabriel there. 36. It was a good marker. This has been a great leg. 36 after 12. 15 dart break a throw. 18. Nathan Yukar, 40. Game shot on the first leg. Nathan Gervan. Hands away in. And a fist pump. An 18 dart hold. Gervan, before the off on this one, was 1 to 2. Gary Second Blades. Second leg, Gary's first. 6 Game to on. 4. You'd probably saw the reflection of how Nathan ended yesterday. That was probably a little bit of value, but 100. I don't think tonight's really a night for the punter. No, we both had a, a look through it, and it it was a little bit difficult to find any kind 100. of value. I think there might be a few fingers burnt tonight. 85. Especially... Anyone playing like Ackers because picking an Acker out of this lot tonight. Oh. Yeah, good luck. 60. I say I thought this group had the potential to go like last Thursday night's group where after the evening's play. 43. All the players were on four points. 96. Just sort of have that potential and that vibe. 99. For that to happen, Adam Mould's going to have to win his last two matches. Yeah, and he's facing Gary Blaine 93. And Alex Spellman. 93. So that would mean if Blades was to lose this, it couldn't happen. 
We might not be getting a repeat 44. of that bizarre situation last week where only six legs separated top to bottom. That was a incredible 45. Gary Car 130. Ball. 105. Nathan Car 107. Seventy-nine. Got car twenty-five. Settle any nerves. Game shot on the second leg. Gary Blake. Very cleanly. On a hold of his own. Eighteen darts. Nathan Grevin had in leg two. Not one of them had a double. Third leg Nathan to third first. Game on. One, one of the three players 14. to produce big averages in Group A. 103.66, and that was after 58. A, quite a long final leg in the match, wasn't it? Eighty-five. One hundred six from Spellman and a one hundred seven from Littler. Fifty-eight. Sixty. Ninety-six. Another max here. And he would have left thirty-six. Eighty. But unfortunately, it was in and out that. Yeah, I think. The only thing I think there is it's sort of gone in so the same sort of hole and it's hit the point because yep. it did have quite a, an audible sound there. Yep. 136. 86. Just about to say, you have to see a big finish this evening. 96. 60. Nathan Car forty. No score. Gary Car one hundred and forty four. This would hurt. It's sort of a been one of those from nowhere sort of shots, but Nathan Gary Blades can pull them out the locker when you least expect it. Getting shot yeah, on the third leg. Does, Nathan Gurban. Cannot afford to sleep on Gary Blades. And he's one of those streak type players that well, he, Gary did through first, he finds the red bit, he tends to absolutely pepper it. One out of forty. It's a night nightmare to play Super League against because you think oh, I've got him here. <laughs> Fifty seven. Next thing you know you're Taking his hand and asking him what he's drinking. 96. 96. Needs all of them. 140. 57. Started on the 19s there. The 519s were left the 170. 58. Thinking from Gary Blades. Good board management. Another disappointing leg on the Blades throw from the so far. Nine darts thrown and only just halfway through the leg. One hundred and forty. Gary Car one hundred and ten. That is one element to his game which is outstanding, is it, Nathan? The ability to to move and still find the target. Ninety. Can he find Nathan the one hundred and six? Let's say that. Yeah. 
65. Go to the car, 20. After the night, you'll find a treble with a, with a lie like that. 10. Nathan Car 41. And this could be the moment that Nathan Gervin really takes a hold of this game. Double 16 to break the throw of Gary Blades. Being shot on the fourth leg, and Nathan Gervin. 3 1 lead for Nathan Gervin. Gary Blades had his opportunity. He let it slip him by. You heard what he thought about it. Well, he's had, it feels like he's had fifth leg, Nathan, to opportunities in a lot of the legs. I mean, he's just one from nine on the doubles. It's not like they've all come in one leg. 134. And for Gervan, this probably feels quite strange because he's playing at a lesser standard than he did in Group A when he was getting beat. But he's getting the results at the moment. He's had six wins in a row now, including the five he got yesterday. And he's on course to make it seven. Despite 93. Despite finding that standard he did at the back end of yesterday. Yeah, well, he... He only averaged 80 in the win over Adam Mould, and he's hovering around mid 80s here. 97. Brilliant cover shot. 180. Brilliant match. Nathan 140. In second. Digging deep, Gary Blades. We have accused him, and on the base of what we've seen before, of beating himself up and getting down on himself. 80. But Gary the nine 90. darts here, he's left himself 90. Good signs for Gary Blades. Doesn't like that lie. He's a bit worried about the flight, I feel here. He's gone big and safe to guarantee a dart at the ball. Game and pings the, the bullseye. What a recovery from Gary Blades. And... Even despite the fact he's had a 12 dart, he's shaking his head. And this is the point that we were trying to make before. But what a Six leg, Gary experienced first. dart on. there from Gary Blades. He didn't like the lie, felt he could get a deflection, came around and just went for the big 20. Yeah, he just made sure. 100. To guarantee the opportunity. And that's why we say you've got to give yourself every opportunity to get a dart on the desired target. The desired target was the smallest one on the board. Blades found it. Best leg. 60. Of the match. Best leg of the night, isn't it? A 12. It is. 93. And at the perfect time as well. After you've just had your throw broken, Nathan Gervan is thrown for the match. Found his fourth 180 of the night. Joining Adam Mould on that tally. Gervan yet to hit one. Right on cue. What a lovely! 93. You just can't script stuff like that, can you? No. 97. Nathan Carr, 147. That 180 has opened up a cushion and a gap. And this 147 doesn't need to go. He can just set this 95. up. 95. Yeah, the snooker at Sheffield starts on Saturday. Who's saying we don't get a 147 ourselves on Saturday 41. night? 41. Nathan Carr, 52. Big slip there for Gary Blades. Sliding into the one. Leaves him on a non-finish and just makes this... A lot more comfortable and easier than it should have been for Nathan Gervan. Game shot on the match. And he mops Nathan up the Gervin. 52. The disappointment written all over Gary Blades. He did fight hard. He gave it a good go, but in the end, it was Nathan Gervan who came away with the points and gets it two games played, two games won, an 88.42 and a 180. The result there for him. Coming up next, Alex Spellman taking on Richard North.
Welcome back to the Modern Super Series where Nathan Gervin has made it back-to-back -back victories here at the Live Lounge by getting the better of Gary Blade by four legs to two in our fourth match of the evening. Another impressive display by the score, 88.5 average, 4 out of 10. When it comes to the finishing, well, all of our games have gone 4-2 so far this evening and reached the halfway point. But who is going to be fortuitous in this game between Alex Spellman and Richard North? Let's find out with Chris and Matt. Thanks, Henry. Match number five, appro approaching the halfway point. Nathan Gervin out on top. Two wins. Play two, one, two. Four points. Winner of this one will join him. Richard North, only 32 years old. It feels like he should be older because it seems like he's been around for a long time. It wasn't that long ago. Richard North was not just a tour card holder, not just a player qualifying for the World Championships, but was qualifying ranked number one from the Pro Tour Order of Merit. Yeah, well, that's how he got his spot. First leg is Alex. Grand Prix, first. of course. Grand Prix and Game the on. World Match Play, two of the toughest to qualify for. Because it's the top 16 in the... Order of Merit, and then the top 16 of the Pro Tour Order of Merit. 80. And the Pro Tour Order of Merit is the Order of Merit that's made up from your players' championship events that will play on the floor, but also the European Tour events make up part of that criteria, which 134. are obviously European events, but played on stages a lot of the time, bigger than the audiences you get in the World Championships. Yeah, absolutely. Not unusual to see audiences... In excess of 8,000 at those Euro Tour events. Interesting you mentioned that Grand Prix. Because it brings up a story. Story time with the Edgar episode 2. And he was getting a bit of banter from Mark Webster. 137. Oh, it's not like Webby. You've never won on TV. You won't do anything on TV. You get too nervous and the rest of it. And then someone pulled out. I think it was Gary 59. Anderson pulled out. And Alex Mark Webster stepped in as a fill-in and drew Richard North. North, he beat him 2-0. <laughs> Richard North. I bet he doesn't remind him too often of that. Not quite as often as you mentioned the 170 to beat Gary Anderson. Oh, have you heard about that? <laughs> 140. Alex Hooker, 56. Ops for a very tidy yeah, start. The first leg, Alex Spellman. 14 dart hold. Very nice indeed. I think the thing with that story is there's always a moment when people Game say, on. what's what's one of your highlights of your career? And a lot of people always think it's something 100. like winning a title or playing in a world championship or doing this or doing Sometimes it can be the ones that are the most intrinsically rewarding and I speak to quite a lot of people. I spoke to a wrestler the other day called Eric Rowan, 100. who used to wrestle in the WWE and was a multiple-time champion. And when he was asked that question, he said the same thing. It's those intrinsic moments. For me, that was one 55. of those, because Gary Anderson, for me, is one of the best five players of all time. And I played him three days prior and missed three match darts. So I was gunning for a rematch, and I got it at the same Super Series. What are the Second max for Spellman. A leg and a half. 56. This is the Alex Spellman that we saw in stages on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He did average 105.76 in his opening game on Wednesday. Was he going average 96.97 on Monday? So he always treats us to a biggie each day. And that certainly wasn't his first game. Alex 83 in that one. But this one is well over the 100 at the moment. This is Gezi Price territory. <laughs> 81. For the 39-32 combination. But his left tops after 12. Hit it in one dart. In leg one. On the back of 56. Alex Yukar, 40. 
Getting shown in the second leg. Houses. Alex Spellman. 14. Followed by a 13 dart break of throw. A 180 in each of the legs. An average of 111.33. Third leg, Alex. Is first. Tight, Game on. Nice territory. And Gezi won the Premier League tonight. An athlete as well, just like Alex Spellman, who did actually win a... 18. An ESPN athlete yep. of the shootout. Only in America. What are the legs? his averages tonight. 116, 108, and 100. Starting to get quite a few 180s here tonight as well, so I hope Paul Hicks has brought some 100. lozenges with him. Of course, he's going to be struggling a bit. He's already done a full session this afternoon. A full session tomorrow as well. 96. Yeah, another double session day here at the Modus Live Lounge. By around about this time tomorrow night, we'll, well, we should pretty much know our lineup for Saturday night's final. And 137. If you want to join us, and you're into your QR codes, there's the Tungsten T Rex. Give that a little scan. And you get all the details of how you can join us on Saturday night. It's a really, really enjoyable night of darts here in Portsmouth. If you're not au fait to the old QR codes like yours truly, head over to www.dartshop.tv. Ninety six. The details there. You've got Richard to pre-book your ticket. It's only a pound. Also, if you're a social media user. At MSS Darts, all one word Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. 80. Alex McCart, 88. No, I don't. <laughs> You're TikToking now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm having a little game show. Dabble the is Alex another Bellman. 15 dart leg that time from Alex Spellman on the balls. 107 the average. Three from three on the doubles, including a bullseye. This is every boxes. Mightily on. impressive here for Alex Spellman. When that QR code came up, May said to me, what do you do with that? I said, oh, you've just got to scan it with your camera. And he pulled out one of those Kodak single-use cameras, and he's like, it's not working. <laughs> 59. If you want to contact us, direct here into the commentary box. Use at MSS Darts and also add on there. 121. At the Edgar 501. And if you've got any comments or questions, fire away. We will answer the better ones. Well, Ross Coleman's actually asked one about Richard North tonight. He says, I've had a throw with Richard North's darts. And do players use other players' darts in the practice room? It's interesting because I had a throw of yours tonight, actually. And mm hmm. 34. You do. When you see something laid down, you go, oh, I'll have a little dabble on those. Yeah, I did the same with yours. Couldn't throw them. Although I did leave you a nice little 180 to have a look at. 95. You tend to find throwing someone else's darts a lot of the times, like wearing someone else's glasses. They're the darts that suit that person, but when you try and throw them, it's all blurry, 80. like putting on someone's glasses and you can't see a thing. Yeah, it tends to that tends to happen really when you're in a more of a, a relaxed environment. So an exhibition is one of the, the sort of multiplayer type exhibitions. You'll you'll just go like, give us a throw of them, and oh, that, there's a dart I really love at the 32. moment. It's the the Joe, Joe Cullen ones, the new ones. They're a beautifully made dart and so well balanced. Well, when you mentioned that, my instant click thought was Gerwin 82. Price through Ryan Searle's darts. I have never seen anyone play darts as well in my life. It was scary. Really? Just 180, 180, 180, 140, 140, 180, just one after the other. And then Gezi turned around and goes, how much for these then, Ryan? It was scarily good. Wow. 139. It was almost like impossible. Did you car 140? with the size of them. Although he does have the guns to throw a dart that heavy. 57 leaves, 57. It's half. And it's got to go the way Spellman's finishing. 94. Alex Hukar, 76. Well, yes, to wrap up a stunning performance from Spellman. It was spell-binding. 
Game shot wow. on the match. Alex Spellman. Well, immaculate on the finishing. Four out of four, including an 88 on the bullseye, winning legs of 14, 13, 15, and 17, and end average 101.90. Richard North not getting a, well, he got one dart at a double, but didn't get a leg, averaging 88.37. Well, after the break, we're going to be back with Adam Mould, Adam Mould against Gary Blades. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where we have reached the halfway point of our evening's action here in Group B. Macy Ace, Chris Mason has joined us up here on the balcony to look back at what we've seen. And it's only appropriate we kick off with what we saw in our last match because that was a standout performance by Alex Bubman, our first ton plus average of the night. Yeah, and I think Matt Ecker described it perfectly. It ticked every box, a ball finish on the 88, uh, a couple of 180s, 100 plus average, and more impressively, the four out of four on the finishing. Indeed, and we were mentioning in the advert break, Richard North averaged 88 and only got one dart a double. Yeah, yeah, that's all he was limited to. And, you know, when you're averaging a, around 90 in terms of a scoring average, it just shows you how well Alex played to just limit him that one opportunity. Indeed. Well, let's have a look then at the table, because as I say, we've reached the halfway point of our evening's action. Spellman and Gervin, the two players, at the top of the table 
on four points. Um, we kind of expected that, didn't we, from Nathan? Yeah, the, they, they were the, the, the two we expected to, to be out in front. We were unsure of whether it was going to be the, the combination or one of the other three up there. But, uh, yeah, opportunity for Gary Blades and Adam Mould to pick up their first win tonight. They're playing next, so someone's O's going to go. But, yeah, we, we, we pretty much thought it was going to be down to Spellman and, and Gervin, especially what we've seen from both. Remember, the only reason... Uh, that Spellman isn't already qualified was because Johnston um, defeated him in the final match of the session. As you mentioned, it's about to get a little bit mouldy on the stage <laughs> here at the Super Series. But what we have seen so far, I know he's not put points on the board, but the performances is something he can take credit and take something from. Yeah, absolutely. He's up there. He's up in the, in, in the 80s in, in terms of averages. That both have been finding the 180s. I think both of them have, have hit the most 180s tonight. Uh, it's just converting the performances into wins, and, and that's the hardest part of this sport. Indeed. So, And don't forget as well, if you want to be a part of this on a Saturday night, tickets are available each and every Saturday here at the Super Series. They're available for a very small booking fee. It's available at dartshop.tv, or you can scan the Tungton T-Rex. Yeah, and get a selfie with Henry on Saturday night, who will be dressed up as a T-Rex. I will not be dressed <laughs> up as a T-Rex. You do have little arms, though, don't you? <laughs> 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 shall we just move on? Yeah. I think we should move on. Game six is Mulvey Blaze. Chris is going to join Matt in comms. I think you had that one coming your way, Henry, considering the jab you've thrown down to the commentary box earlier on this afternoon. But there'll be haymakers that both players will be throwing on the stage. One of them will be bottom of the table on zero. Someone needs to pick up some points in this one. It's a battle of two players that could be taking each other on the PDC Challenge Tour at some point this year because both players applying their trade on there in a hope to get a PDC Tour card. That will be a first PDC Tour card for Adam Mould for Gary Blades. He'll be looking at regaining a PDC Tour card. He did get some Tour first like he's had him to throw first. event call-ups last year. Game on! especially on the events over in Germany. And one of them, he actually went to the Challenge Tour event a week prior. 100. Stayed around in Germany for the potential call-up, got the call-up, and reached the semi-finals. He stuck around Sunday. hoping for a dropout, and it all played out perfect. It was an absolute masterstroke by Gary Blades. Well, Fallon was in a similar position, of course, wasn't she? She was out there staying on for Cameron Menzies' matches. And 55. Of course, everyone's gone home, and there was a couple of fallouts, and she took her spot. Many people have been critical of the scheduling of the pdc in regards to these events myself included but i've got to say on that occasion the scheduling was fantastic they did the challenge tour weekend which led straight into the pro tour 100 and i don't know why that doesn't happen more often because all the boards are set up you don't yep. have to mess around with it it's so much easier and also for the players that are in that to transition no, yeah. over and doesn't have like like before it'd be the challenge tour one week the pro tour the week after You'd either have to stick around in your four days or fly back home to fly 80. back again. And... Yeah, and, and of course, when they when they do get the call-ups, um, I can use Nathan for an example. He got a call at 60. Got your car in the morning. Uh, can you make it? Can you get to Can you get to Wigan by eleven o'clock? Right. Okay, but that's not not the ideal preparation. But like you say, if they did it back to back and there 20. was some fallouts which they would then or pullouts that they would then know about they're already on site aren't they yeah it's essentially do you need to go home now rather Range than can you the come first back leg. Adam absolutely and of course then there's the, the, the cost involved a lot of the players on the challenge tour of course are far from full time professionals like so most of them hold Game down on. a full time job but let's not just say the challenge tour I would say nearly half yeah. of the pro tour are also Working yeah. 140. The system is going the right way. It's developing, but it's not quite in a position to support 128 41. players at the moment. Another year, you won't be getting a Christmas card off Matt 60. Porter. Which 
don't know if you've seen it yet, but I watched a recent interview with Six Sam eight. Dawson, and it was absolutely fascinating with Matt Porter and his rise from being a 140 journalist and becoming the CEO of 140 get the your car 161 95 didn't even contemplate the 51 for ball with Adam Mould back on 260 77. Gary O'Car, 66. 66. Tops. And he's feeling the situation here, taking a step back, composing 46. himself. He does have another handful of darts. He lets us know the distance of the dart to the double. But he's one, one of those that just wants everything done Get straight away. 20. He's not one that goes, okay, it's okay, I've got another three darts, which can often affect the next visit. Yeah, you sort of carry over a bit of negativity. He was often, reel him in, get the rod out. Ten. That's why he needed a bit of comms, so you could three. see Mason literally with his pretend rod reeling him back. But that is four missed starts now for Gary Blades, and that offers an opportunity for Adam Mould to break the throw. It's double ten, the target that Gary Blades 23. was not able Gary to convert. Gary O'Connor, ten. Well, so far tonight, the doubling has been a disaster. Those the important eight out of your car, 20. Not able to convert, he'll be disappointed. And this will just compound the misery if he can mop up this 10. One dart left, 10. Gary, you have another two. go, Gary. He's had six darts. Yeah, the. No. no score. I say, can Out of you car, 10. Final double on the board. It's a good guide. Oh, just bumped too much. No score. Got you car, and 10. Sometimes when you get in these situations, you almost want your opponent to hit it yep. because you almost get a bit of embarrassment. No score. Exactly. Out of you car, 10. Game shot on the second leg. Adam Mould. Adam Mould won't mind because that's two now. And a break of throw. Yeah, he can't believe the opportunities he had there. But, uh, Gary Blades has taken like 30 points off his average Game in that on. leg. Prior to having a, dart, a double, he was averaging 97. Well, he's had nine official missed darts at the double. But he also had to burn darts because he couldn't throw with them. When he comes inside the single one on the first dart, he loses three darts, not just the one. And the same when he did it on the second dart. So that's three extra darts on top of the nine he's already missed due to the bust. 123. <laughs> 135. Scoring's not the issue. <laughs> 41. Oh, thank you. 41. Another one of your favourite nicknames, isn't it? With a, a Y put on the end. 84. Yeah, um, it's not adventurous enough for me. And if it, I don't mind him having the nickname Mouldy if he fully embraces it. He needs a shirt, like a white shirt covered in mould yep. and... You've got to fully embrace 137. the nickname Gary of Mouldy, 142. I think. 86. Adam, your car, 60. Bit of fake bacteria on there. 
back over to that double ten, which seems to have a repellent on it at the Pretty. moment. Gary Ucar, now, this is normally what happens. A player will miss 12 darts like Gary Blazes in last, then he'll mop this up first dart. He's laughing because that was so close to the trouble 20. You watch this, straight in the double 18. Seen the film, haven't we? 38. Well, two good efforts, 10. but it's more of the same result for Gary Blades. The mole back on the double five. He hit it to win the last leg. Game Hits shot it to win this leg. one. Adam Mole. And, well, this is one of them situations where you want Paul Hinks just to walk over to Gary now in these 10 seconds and go, how do you feel, Gary? <laughs> For the Gary to throw first, game on. I don't know, but I don't think you could repeat it. We may need to pre-warn our tech team 82. so they can get that bleep button ready. Yeah, it would be needed. 60. Not too many 60. sports I've played as frustrating as this one. Well, it's a fine motor skill judged on very small what targets with the difference between the maximum score you can hit and the minimum score you can hit. Well, What's, what's 96. the measurement of that across there? It's, it's nothing. The width of the wire. Yeah, less than a less than a millimeter. Forty. Uh, traditional shot down your local that one eighty and then forty three spanners. Normally a twenty six, isn't it? One eighty yeah. twenty six. Usually followed by a, a bag of nails. 48. Forty-three. The bag of Gary your car one hundred and fifty-one. I feel like he needs like a Combination 91. shot here. I think coming up with three in hand is going to just cause the same problem. Yeah, it will create the same kind of anxiety. 43. Like say, just needs a, a big finish or something to something positive to build on. Game shot on the fourth leg. Gary Example Bay. there of how close the game should be in terms of of looking at the scoring, however, so if I got him to throw first, game on. the numbers that count. Despite that, though, the overall running stats of 77 average for Gary Blades is performing the better in terms of the scoring. And when you think that's 12 missed darts plus the three burnt, he's probably, 100. in a scoring sense, running at a mid 90s. Well, yeah, well, like I said, until the Array of missed doubles, he was averaging 97. One out of them, 40. Is that what you'd really realistically consider a, a leg's worth of darts yep. in terms of extra at the double? Yeah. 95. Yeah, it's a leg of 501. 100. A little sign of inexperience at the top level there for Adam Mole to go for the 100 from the 268. 57. Sorry. 45, sorry. We Gary Blades quite a long way back. It's not going to be effective to this point, but when he's playing on things like the Challenge Tour, like he's trying to compete on at the moment, they could be little things that just cost you a leg, which yep. could cost you a match. Well, especially at that level, there, there's plenty of players who 85. Take out the 306 in six. Tops. 70. He will return. Gary Blades, a long way back. And it'd be a long way back for him in this group because he would be bottom of the table. 40. Three played, three defeats. Game shot on the match, Adam Mould. Nice.
exactly what it is. Three games played, three defeats as Adam Mould ticks up his first win of the campaign here in Group B. There are the numbers 75 and 78. A couple of 180s thrown in there, but it was a match all about Miss starts at doubles when we come back after the break. Nathan Gervin back in action against the joint table topping Alex Spellman. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Adam Mould was a 4-1 winner against Gary Blades in our previous match. It means that he gets his first win on the board. Well, our next game has the potential to be game of the night as Nathan Gervin takes on Alex Spellman as described by Chris and by Matt. Certainly does have potential to be game of the night. These two players have been with us all week so far. They both joined us on Monday for their Group A campaigns, and it's fair to say they probably both brought their A game out on the very last day, which was yesterday on Wednesday. Alex Spellman averaged 105.76. Nathan Gervin had an average of 103.66. But when we're looking at tonight and who's transferred that over, it's this man, Alex Spellman, who had that amazing performance in the last game, 101.90. 
four from four on the doubles, and that included a bullseye finish. So Nathan Gervin is going to have his hands full. He wants to be the man clear at the top of the table after three laps of fixtures. First leg is Nathan to through first. Game on. Yeah, Nathan's going to have to find another gear if a Spellman is anywhere near that kind of level. But it's a gear we know he has in the locker. He himself has had 43 plus average. Yeah, I think you summed it up perfectly at the end of that match. He ticked every box, didn't he, in a in a beautiful four leg demolition. 134. Richard North, who was restrict was restricted to just one a double. Now I am going to pose a little bit of a question mark 93. over that though. Yesterday, Alex Spellman had a fantastic performance, just like the one he just had. In fact, it was better, the 105.76. But the follow up to that was a 78.93. Although the early indications of this suggest that the follow-up to this one is going to be more like what we've just seen rather than a giant cliff 100. dive of a performance. Yeah, I think off the, the back of that performance, he would have probably relished a bit more opportunity to just the allow the adrenaline to one hundred and fifteen the right arm. He's got a lot of support. We had people waking up during the week at four o'clock in the morning 42. to join us. Alistair and we've got some support 72. coming in as well from Indiana. Talking about Alex setting the standard high. Thanks for joining us tonight, Boa. Hope you're enjoying the action. Your man's doing you proud. Yeah, at least you don't have to get up at silly o'clock. Much nicer time slot for those in the US. 60. Alex Hukar, 16. Getting shot the first leg. Alex the Spellman. run continues. This is mightily impressive from Alex Spellman. And we was warned about this. We was told. Keep your eye on Alex Spellman. Second leg, Alex, to through first. Game I on. can see why he comes with such a high recommendation. Well, I'm, I'd like to know firsthand 100. whether he's sort of replicated these types of performances. I can't find anything that suggests that. And we, we knew his running average coming into this. We've seen his numbers over on the CDC tour. I think a lot of that comes down to what he said, though, in his own words. He says he's not as switched on and engaged when he's playing back at home sometimes because... The levels are different. Yeah, the depth of eight. talent. Just at the top end, it's there. But the depth of the quality isn't quite there. And he says he just kind of switches off a little bit. That is something I do think he's going to change over the coming years. I see America as a real sort of developing territory. And I think it's really going to be the next big movement in darts. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And he did have a very good Q score, didn't he? But again, not the kind of numbers we're seeing here from him. 140. Nathan Carr, 76. This is for an 11 dart leg. 60. Wow. Alex Ukar, 145. Oh, this would smart. One hundred and five. Nathan Lucas sixteen. So how do you respond to someone breaking your darts in thirteen? Game show you hit the them back leg. Nathan with Gervin. a thirteen dart of yourself. Nathan Gervin showing those qualities that have seen him to three youth world championship finals. Third leg, Nathan to through first. Game on. And titles on the Dev Tour. 140. Responded well here. He would have watched that performance by Spellman against North. 
knowing that it was... 86. ...him up next against Spellman. But when the throw... 140. Produce darts of this quality. One hundred. Fifty seven. Richard North back in action in our match to follow against Gary Blades. That will be Gary's final match of the 95. session. Ninety five. Net the car one hundred and sixty four. And one of key importance as well for Gary Blades because it's getting to that desperation point 64. for him. If he was to lose to Richard North, that would mean that third place will be overnight guaranteed to be a minimum of four points. And Gary Blades is on zero. He'd need a David Pallet style resurrection, which was compared one out of to that 40. of The Undertaker. <laughs> In real fighting, Tyson Fury <laughs> against Deontay Wilder. Oh, you were eighty. <laughs> oh, this has been a disastrous back end to the leg. Fifty-seven, sixty-four, twenty. Game shot on the third leg. Alex Spellman and paid the price as Spellman breaks in fifteen. Oh, breaks a thrower, usually an indication of a Galaxy scrappy game. First. game on. Not so in this one. I remember one of my favourite comments actually about that Tyson Fury resurrection, and it was Tyson Fury shockingly beats the 97. ten despite being pronounced clinically dead for eight of them. <laughs> Sixty-six. Great refereeing because. The referee was literally just looking over him and you can tell a lot by a, a fighter's eyes whether they're going to get up or not and he gave him every opportunity. We've got a, a, a darts version of it. I'd probably say 58. would be James Wade turning it around against Mervyn King maybe yeah. or Scott Waits against James Wade. Yeah, and the slam in the final. Andy Hamilton, Simon Whitlock. Oh, yes. Well, match 99. Play. Didn't we have one recently where someone was like four sets up in the World Championship as well? One of the days! And then we had it at the WDF World Championship when Jim McEwen and yep. Neil Duff. Yeah, he was 3 0 up, wasn't he? 81. True Rocky stories on the hockey. How about that bloke that did it against Martin Adams in 57. The Worlds. Is this where you want me to say yourself? <laughs> well, we've had your Gary Anderson 170. <laughs> 95. Remember that Ninja World Championship Carl final? 140. Martin Adams and Phil Nixon. Phil Nixon. It looked like Adams was going to run away with it, and then he had an almighty scare. Yeah, he was 5 0 up. Nixie got it back to 5 5. 100. Alex Hill 70. Alongside Phil Nixon, who was making his England debut. A wonderful fella, sadly missed. Well, can he find tops with his final dart again? Ooh. 35. Nathan O'Carr, 40. Thirty-five. That could be. Alex you car thirty-five. Beginning of the end in this match. You can't afford to do that against Alex Spellman when he's in the form that he's showing tonight. Certainly on the doubles. Game shot. That's the why you can't afford Alex to Spellman. do that. He confirms the breaker throw. Gervin had a chance to get the throw straight back, but instead, he now needs to reel off 
three legs on the row. The oh, Flag Nation is through first. Game on. Will just open himself a little bit of a gap, not just from second position, but ultimately for the qualifying positions, which goes all the way down to third place tonight. One hundred. Go through to Saturday night. We will be concluding Group C and Groups B tomorrow. One o'clock, we're back. 25. Tomorrow afternoon, or should I say this afternoon, as we're past the midnight hour. 57. We'll at 10 o'clock, the conclusion of this Group B. And then our lineup for Saturday night's final will be complete. And why don't you join us? Get your. Phones ready to scan the 59. QR code. If you're not one of those that uses them, dartshop.tv is the website 57. to go to. Book your ticket. Doors open at 6.30 Saturday night. We'd love to have you here. Here is the Tungsten T-Rex. One hundred and forty. And don't forget your cash, because for just twenty pounds you could probably have a photo with Chris Mason. <laughs> dear, oh dear, I, I, I got into an 41. argument over that about someone saying that dark players charge for their autographs. I sort of what? Not in my lifetime. One hundred. Forty. It's having to do a, a lot tonight for Nathan Gervin. Mm. And that's because the, the dart is being thrown with just too much aggression and it's not, not getting to the board cleanly. 46. You can hear it as it's clattering into the other darts and just losing its momentum on a forwards thrust, so not penetrating and gripping the board. Not going past the knuckle of the point. Yeah, well, it's it's going into the board. 81. And it's, it's not 131. In time. Nathan, that's going to be the easier finish of the two. As you've already picked up on the finishing from Spellman is standing right now. 89. So it's got to go. Car 125. Don't hit another. Now you can hit it. Oh. 100. Alex Hukar, 42. So close, but pretty much sums up his match. Twenty-six. Wow. Nathan Car twenty-five. Chance for Nathan to extend this one. A bit of an unexpected chance as well, considering how well Mike Spellman has been on the doubles. Twenty-one. And the opposite one. Ali to a car sixteen. You don't feel he's gonna get more opportunities in group A. He had hundred and twenty six darts at doubles, hit forty eight. That is well above our expected quota. Was four from four in his last game. Game the percentages the match, suggest Alex he's going Spellman. to hit it, and he does. And Alex Spellman moves clear to the top of the table, and that could actually be very important in terms of winning the group when we take a look at the legs difference. A 4 1 success for Alex Spellman with an average of just shy of 86. Coming up next, a mightily important game for Gary Blades as he takes on Richard North.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where before the break we saw Alex Spellman get the better of Nathan Gervin by four legs to one. Spellman with an 86 average just underneath, but for Gervin it was one for nine on the outer wing, which came back to cost him at the end of that one. Well, next up for us is a final game of the evening for Gary Blades. He takes on Richard North Blades in desperate search of a victory in this one, being watched in the commentary box by Matt Edgar and Chris Mason. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, desperate game for Gary Blades is the best way of putting this one. He's currently at the foot of the table on zero points, minus seven legs. But we know he's got the quality to get himself out of this sort of situation. A former PDC tour card holder and Pro Tour semi-finalist. But this man, Richard North, also a former tour card holder and with having that tour card achieved more than Gary Blades. Got to be fair to be said, reached the World Championship, the World Match Play, the World Grand Prix, topped the Pro Tour Order of Merit, and at one point was a seed on the PDC Pro Tour as well. So two first players Gary to do first. looking to get back to their highest Game of on. highs. He was ranked as highest 32 in the world. So I've had a bit of information come through as well about Gary Blades, and it comes from a quite well-known equipment designer who tells me 125. Gary Blades is actually using a bit of a prototype. Right, okay. And this 42 is called the Stiletto, which is based on a women's shoe, I believe. Correct. One of the pairs of myself, I mean, if you. <laughs> sure, they make them in my size, but who knows? One of the forty. Looking at Richard North's career, semi final on a European tour in 2018, a final of a Players' Championship in 2017. 100. Last 16 in the World Grand Prix when you mentioned that he beat Webby in round one. 140. Richard Ricard, 136. Those were his peak years, 2016 through 17, 18, and then 19, he just started to drop off. At 32 years 18. old, though, we should also be able to Gary say Ricard, that there were peak years so far. And at 32, we... Yeah could quite easily have a wave here where we say that was actually part of the, the journey and the 45. experience of Richard Moore. Richard Ricard, 56. I agree. Potentially, his best years could be ahead of him. Game shot on the first leg. Richard North. There was a very, very good quote from JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield. Who, when he lost the like Richard to throw first, WWE game on. World Championship and he was introduced as a former world champion, stopped. And he says, I'm not a former 41. world champion, I'm a future world champion. One out of them, 40. Sixty, and that's where players like Gary Blades and Richard North probably want to be pitching themselves, where they don't want to sit here say they're a former tour card holder. They want to be in the same breath as when we're talking about Lucas Venig last week, when we said he's a tour card holder in the making. He will 100. be. Yeah. These don't want us to talk about their previous achievements. They want to talk about the journey that's ahead for that road. But Gary Blades at the up. moment is a very bumpy one. Yeah, his, his performances are like them rolling hills on a on a tread machine. A lot of peaks and a lot of troughs. Thirty.
What a delay! Great timing. Perfect there to leave the double ten. And not only that, but it landed a blow on Gary Blades. And I mentioned at the very start of the show, you'll literally see him 20. get on his own back and have a fight with himself throughout. He well, certainly he... won't be a good poker player. <laughs> no, no way. But he will be thinking there that the deflected Game dart, on the second leg. which went Richard into the five, with, which left him no finish, and he's thinking, well, if that had landed in the 20, I'd have been having a dart at tops off the back of 160. And to cause even more pain, he's got it the first. Game last one. dart in hand, landing double five. Eighty-five. Thirty-six. Is the statistically the best performance of the night so far from Richard North? For Gary Blades, it'll be hoping to save the best for last. Is this is the last time we'll see him. We will see Richard North one more time. That'll be in our very last game. Against Nathan Gervin in a game that I think has got all the ingredients to mix up one very tasty cake. Yeah, that's got a, a seven lecker and 41. And a, a good few 180s in it. Forty-seven. Eighty-seven. Alex Spellman, Adam Mould. Twenty-two. You were the game left to come this evening, and then that will be done for Thursday's action. We'll then be back. Fifty-eight. The conclusion of Group C around one p.m. UK time. Yeah, less than. 12 hours away. 57. By the time we Got your car 105. Oh, it's matches. 65. We've yet to be treated to a ton plus finish yet tonight. We was just having a little giggle about that off air, saying how ironic 74. would it be Got your after car the 40. issues that Gary Blades has faced on the doubles tonight if he popped in Game the first biggie the that will make him feel a lot better a one dart the double and in it went and he's even talking to the darts now he's saying well done dart that's what i want you to do well, Gary Gary does have the highest finish of the night a 90. 98. One hundred and thirty-four. Ninety-six. Twenty-nine. Can be such a frustrating game, darts, the Success and failure are just closer than in any other sport. Well, you, you spoke a lot about the range, and he just no in between with him, is there? 100. You can find yourself getting embroiled just watching Gary Blades. Yeah. Because he's actually quite interested to what all the different faces could probably even. Clip up a little clip show there. The 100 faces of Gary Blades. So it gives you a reaction per dart. 68. Managed to leave a 170. 85. Gary Car 170. I to remember... Being around Gary Blades in Germany. 50. Due to you that we had 90. The same equipment manufacturer sponsor. And he played Michael Van Gerwen, and Michael Van Gerwen afterwards said to him, because you're a good player. Just 80. stop beating Gary yourself up so much. 120. 
then went on to beat Michael Van Gerwen, I think, the same weekend. <laughs> well, is this our first 10 plus finish? You asked for one, Matt. 100, Richard Ricard, 10. In close, sir. Game shot on the four flag, there Richard. He goes. Not for the first time in this match, finding double five with final dart in hand. And that's the one that hurts you the most. Oh. If they got it through the first, the first one on. goes in. Yeah. Right, okay. And then you're. You watch the second one miss, and you think, oh, just give me a go. 41. And it hurts even more when the initial two are a mile away. <laughs> well, we saw one this afternoon, didn't we? Jason yeah. Askew, match winning dart. He hit, 60. Hit the number. The number five, <laughs> and then straight in. One hundred. North, just one leg away. Joining 43. Nathan Gervin on four points. And he will play Nathan Gervin. If he wins here, beats Nathan Gervin. 82. He goes from fourth to joint top. 133. That's if Spellman, of course, loses to Mould, which... Pretty unlikely. 42. Just like the look of Northy here, didn't we? At 4 to 6, we thought that represented a... 95. But a decent value. On today, yes. On another day, I might have questioned it a little bit, just on the basis of Gary Blades, depending how he looks on certain days. But I think today, it had just... Every blow is landed on him, and eventually 55. you're Richard not going to get back 170. up again. We've been waiting for a ton plus finish. Oh, we nearly had the biggest one. 105. With these big round barrels that he has, you are going to get a few extra deflections when the darts just sort of bounce off each other. 46. Richard Rukar, 65. This for the match. Tops. 45. Gary Rukar, 135. Come on then, Gary. Let's see our first ton plus finish. That's actually sat in the board really nicely for him. I'd have fancied that if he could have found the treble 20. But unfortunately, it's missed. And for Gary Blades, it might be... Ending the day. 55. Zero Richard points Ducar, in 20. Richard North. Match darts. Now that should act as a good wall. Oh, he's somehow North come goal. between Gary them. Ducar, and he's checking it himself a couple of times. He can't believe it. I can't. I thought that had to go in. Gary Blades has been struggling to hit a double in this situation, decided to go for two, and has thrown it off the board. 40, Richard Ducar, 20. The dubious decision there from Gary Blades to restrict himself match, a Richard chance North. at a double, and he ends the day on zero points. Richard North, however, gets another two points on the board, which does see him move into the qualifying positions as things stand up into third, and he does still have another game to go. But before that, we've got one game standing in the way. That is Alex Spellman taking on Adam Mould.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. Uh, before the break, Richard North got the better of Gary Blaze by four legs to one. And in doing so, has moved himself on to four points. So just one more game for him to play the seed. That's a Gary Blaze pointless after his first nine's action here at the Super Series. So next up for us is Alex Spellman up against Adam Mould. And this game with huge consequences in the table. Spellman on six, looking for the perfect night. A win for Mould can just things up very tightly indeed in the group. In the commentary box, of this one here's Matt Edgar and Chris Mason thank you Henry and well Alex knows all about going through the card and beaten in it in group A well, we like Northley in the last one at four to six we really liked Alex in this one at four to seven and the final match to follow Northey against Nathan Gervin Nathan does have that bounce back ability that has been on display. We've seen a, enough already from this evening to assess the players and make those predictions. First leg is Alex to throw first. Game on. I think Alex Spellman has shown real good qualities again here. We're learning a lot about his game and the disappointment of missing out on winning Group A certainly hasn't caused any setbacks for him and he's come into this group and if 66. anything he's playing better because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday he averaged 87 on each of the days which means he averaged 87 for the entire group but that is certainly a little bit higher in here. 100. Yes, it's aided by the 101.90 that he put in match number two. He's got an opportunity here to pretty much get his qualification confirmed on day one. Yep. 58. Yeah, eight points is what we predict will be more than enough to ensure qualification. And he has a very healthy leg defense 57. as well. I'll see on plus nine. Yeah, and he's playing Adam Mould here in this game, who's currently fourth in the table. If he is to win this... He will go six points clear of Adam Mould, and he will extend okay. his leg difference as well. Now, the last game is Richard North versus Nathan Gervin. They're already second and third, respectively, so that's not going to affect the chances of Spellman qualifying. He will end the day six points clear, and there's only eight points to play for. Two points for a win. Leg difference will 97. play its part, of course. It usually does in Group B. 40. One hundred and forty. Adam Lukar, one hundred and sixty-four. Elman will be back. His finishing tonight across the board has been very impressive. One hundred and four. Alex Lukar, sixty. Just don't expect him to miss these shots. Game shot on the first leg, Alex Spellman. 17 dart hold, 1-0. One nil. Second leg, Adam did through first, game on. I wonder what he does with his spare time, because a lot of people will play video games and computer games. But One out of them, if it's 14. your job to design them, I wonder if it actually puts off part of the fun. I know when I was coaching football I wasn't able to go and enjoy watching a game of football anymore because I ended up not watching 134. The, the game as such I ended up reading what was going on I'd be the ball would be up in front I'd be seeing what the left back's up to and trying to work out different shapes and you sort of analyzing the game rather than enjoying it Fortnite one of the most popular games is a game that Alex Spillman's actually worked on I've never really Understood the the big catchment. My son plays that game quite a bit, and he'll come up and he'll be like, 
Dad, can I have twenty pounds to buy this skin? And I'm like, why? What does that do? He goes, oh, it makes me look like a giant banana. Forty-three. And I'm like, yeah, but what's the benefit of looking like a giant banana? He's like, well, you look like a giant banana. It's like, yeah, but does it make you faster? Does it? No, you just look like a giant banana. And some of these skins, these outfits, like they're really expensive. No, I know there's probably some Fortnite fans out there thinking there's so much more to it, Matt, than just looking like a giant banana. You can like change your parachute to look like an umbrella and things like that, and you you're paying real money for this. It does the same thing. It just looks a bit different. Eighty six. Genius. This fifty two is getting one hundred thirty two piled on to it. Fifty two. A beautiful setup shot from Spellman. Nearly in the five. Game shot on the Does second get the double Adam ten Mould. in the first bit of reaction from Adam Mould as he holds in 15. Third leg, Alex, to through first. Just Game seen on. on Twitter, trending in the sports section is the Butcher. So people obviously getting their support in early for Mark Graham tomorrow, who will be returning for some Group C action. He Picked up one victory this morning. He'll be needing a perfect day if he's going to have any hope of joining Luke Littler on Saturday. 91. Good to see him trending across the sports section. One of those dark players that have a, a nickname. 41. That is around their occupation. If that was with Spellman, it would be the designer, the creator. Oh, I like it. 60. The Fortniter. I'm not too sure of Adam Mould's occupation, but I know that he is involved 45. with organising and running a lot of darts competitions. There'll probably be quite a few people 59. hoping he doesn't play in them because he's a fine player. Eighty one. One hundred. Need to have another to leave a turn. One hundred and thirty-four. Great use of the cover. Couple of options here, really. Yeah, 105. Alex Hukar, 100. Yeah, I like that. To leave a two dart possibility and also guarantee a shot of the ball just with the two singles. Ninety. Adam Hukar, 86. Wonderful second dart to work over what would normally be a bit of a blocker. Second 18. Leaves the ball. Alex Spellman thinks it's going to go. Game shot. He knows something leg. we Adam don't. Mold. Adam Mould. 86 finish on the ball. Spellman still nodding along. It's like that little dog that you put Both in your car. Game on. 91. He expected that. And the medicine was served up. Good finish 81. there from Adam Mould. Big break of throw. Could just keep Spellman in the mix. We were saying about how Alex Spellman could pull away and pretty much guarantee his place with victory here, with defeat 119. here. It'll be wide open because one of Gervin and North will have to reach six legs. 
six points, sorry. And Adam Mould will also go on to four. 85. Interesting little question I've just seen pop through on Twitter. It says, if we could invent a new major event, what would it be? I I quite like the really short formats, you know, like the old news of the world, best of three, 501, or even your thousand and one. 100. It's just a big scoring fest of a leg. Yeah, I come up with an idea very, very much based on the theme of the, the snooker shoot, shootout. It's one leg of a thousand and one. You, you're all in the, the one no, room. You don't know who you're going to play or when. It's just as it's drawn and... The basically the the winner on his once he's won is goes into the the jar and picks out the the two names and the winner goes back into a winner's jar and you carry on like that. You know you're on because your walk on music is introduced. Ah, so you're going for the Royal Rumble approach. <laughs> Not that what I know what that is, but yeah. I don't know your car. One hundred and fifty-two. It would be just fascinating. We can have new records set in terms of your car, lowest leg of a thousand and one, the most one eight is ever seen in a leg. Getting shot on the fourth leg. Alex of Bellman. Elements. And this is one element I'm a big fan of in Alex Spellman. That that just resilience he shows. Fifth leg, Alex to throw first. Didn't panic, Came had on. his throw broke. Would have been disappointed to miss the double ten on the ton finish that allowed. Mold in to take the bull on 86. What does he do? Doesn't sulk. 140. Licks his wounds and pops in a 13 darter. And if, like me, you're thinking Spellman's just sort oh, of yeah. ticking along in this game, he's absolutely not. I took a glance at the averages and he's up by the 100. And I think that's a little sign there of the expectation now on Alex Spellman, because we said this with Luke Littler as well earlier on in the week, that he was quite often playing really well, but it felt like he wasn't. Yeah. We used to, used to have that with Phil back in the day. He was, 60. He'd sort, of not be, he'd sort of be paying attention, but not taking too much notice, and it wouldn't particularly sound like a good game, and you go, oh, what was his average there? Oh, 102.53. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> happens a lot with Van Gerwen as well 100. at the moment, doesn't it, where yeah. you will quite often hear the commentators reference that it doesn't feel like he's playing well and you look down and well it's averaging over 100 96 Alex your car 121 that's the the downside of being good you get judged by great standards 65 Well, he's run away with this leg. There's only one player in this one. 200 points exactly ahead after 12 darts thrown. It also comes down to the fact that Adam Mould has been leg. unable Alex to hit a treble in that leg. And he won't get another chance to hit one. Good reaction here from Spellman after being broken. Yeah, back-to-back -back legs. The two legs completed in just Six 27 like darts. First. Game on. He's now one away. Now the pressure builds. Not for Spellman. 100. For this man, Adam Mould. 32. 85. And again, a real positive sign of that reaction. You open with a 32, backs it with a 180. We are seeing a very mentally strong character here in Alex Spellman. 140. You guys over in America, very proud. Absolutely. It's been a little week. I'm super impressed with the way he 
70. He's raising his game, finding new levels. And after that disappointing leg in the last one where Mulvady thrown 12 darts and didn't even find a treble. It's going to be said, this is a fantastic reaction from him as well. This is the game we expected to see. Well, he's hit at least one treble in every scoring visit. And on two occasions, he's hit two 84, trebles. 84, Adam 40. Game shot on the sixth leg, Adam Mould. Despite the max, 14 data. Advantage still very much with this man. He has the honour in the final decider. Leg, Alex to throw first, game on. Despite the 11 point difference in the averages, it feels like 3 3 is the place it should be. 100. Well, the three legs for the players Adams, 15, 18, and 14. Alex, 17, 13, and 14. 135. What a time this would be for a max. One of the His third of the game. The fourth of this match in total. But quite possibly the most important one at the most important time. Nice yeah, could be pivotal, that one. Because he's 48 points in front plus these. One hundred and five. Going the full repertoire. I think it's one of those statements where you say, if you're not impressed yet by Alex Spellman, Alex what is it going to take to impress you? Because that was fantastic counting to eliminate the possibility of the bullseye here and just a single treble in a dart for the match. Still just got time to set this one up. The doubling from both has been very impressive, considering it's been a high-pressure game. Spellman 100. has done a 4 out of 4 60. this evening. Can he do a 4 out of 5? Game shot in classy, the match. Classy, classy performance Spellman. there by Alex Spellman, winning legs of 17, 13, 14, and 15. Three one eight is in the match. Finishing stats of 66.67%. Big difference in the averages. Ended up quite a close game. Well, coming up next after a short break, our final match of the session. Richard North takes on Nathan Gerben.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Alex Spellman has been the standout performer tonight and he completes the card with a 4-3 success against Adam Mould doing so over 98.67 average and three matches in that match topped off by a 4 out of 6 checkout ratio. So the final match of our evening sees Richard North in action up against Nathan Gervin and this is being watched in the comms box by Matt and by Chris. Thank you Henry. Yeah, congratulations to Alex Spellman. For the first time this week, goes through the card. Has been the most consistent player of the evening. Absolutely rock solid and, and exceeding a, a 90 average for the evening, isn't he, uh, Matt? Yeah, he would have, due to that 101.9 over, that would have really boosted it up. Considering he started quite slow, actually. Four from 18 on his doubles in his opening game. So he's recovered that one quite well. Yeah, it's two big averages, the 100 plus and the 98.67 in the last one. These are two players who have both won two out of their three matches so far. Four points. First leg is reaching to throw first. These two. Well, looking at the historical data, Game the only on. area that North is superior, and it's... Just a 2% advantage, and that's in the 99. finishing department. But in terms of averages and everything else... 43. Well, looks to be a superior player, but he just doesn't look himself. He didn't handle the... 125. Almost put one foot in the final with a win here. This is a huge game. 83. And he's got to treat it as such. I think it's fair to say the same assessment that we had of him. 21. Tuesday, I believe it was, when Henry asked me how would I describe. And I just gave him a one-word answer. I said, erratic. Yeah. What are they? Another example of that there, 43, 83, 180. 140. Just at a 180 and then you're... 59. Richard McCarr, 116. Just, just thrown three perfect darts at the one target and you're moving away. Tops. Game shot on the first leg. Richard Knob. 15 dollar hold. And we've now got a Tumplus checkout. The first one yeah. of the evening. <laughs> Goes to Richard North, who did that on the very north of the Sound board. Like Nathan to through first. Game one. The northest it can get and still be a scoring segment. Richard North in the 43. same nickname bracket as Adam Mould with the Northy nickname, but he has had a few other nicknames. Can you repeat them? One out of them, folks. I can repeat some of them. He's had Mouth of the South, Lionheart. Oh, yeah, I remember Lionheart. 45. And I remember sharing a, a minibus with him once, and he, he had a Normally a nickname is meant one to be like a, a short or brief, yeah, but this was a longer one. They kept calling him Shut Up Northy. Yeah, I've heard Andy Jenks use that one a lot Eight when eight. they're in the same same group. I hear it coming from the players' room. It's popular because they, they were all saying it. 57. He's got a fair few. We've also heard the, oh, no, here comes Northy. I hope that one's not charged by the letter. 29. Richard yeah, Ducar, 164. 97. He's a big lover of films and movies. Yes. Yeah, he's a bit of a movie buff. To 
really sort of scary levels. Like, if you put him on one of these 100. shows like The Chase on the category of movies, he's going to be rich. Game shot on the second leg. Richard no. Oh, rich vein of form on tops. Back to back legs in 15. Both ending on the top of the shot. Third leg, Richard in the first. Game on. For about two and a half hours traveling across Germany. And I was in the back with 16. Richard North, and he says, Who's your favorite actor? Or an actor you know a lot of movies of? I says, Go Adam Sandler. He says, Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to play one for one. He says, you name a film, I'll name a film. And the first one who can't name a film when it lands on them loses. So we traded off all the obvious ones to begin with. And then 95. to help me out, Keegan Brown was sat in front of me and he went on Wikipedia and he typed in Adam Sandler movies and held the phone up so I could read over the shoulder these movies. And 81. I was calling these movies out and I called one out. Richard goes, wow, that's really impressive. He goes, you're only in that film for about 10 seconds. I'm like, how do you know this? Wow. 43. So if you ever want, you know, wants to be a millionaire and you get the question, phone a friend for the movie trivia. What the North the is your man. Yeah, I, don't, no, I don't really watch television, so. 93. Just don't seem to have the time to. When I'm with the missus and I'm up in North Wales and just chilling for a couple 100. of days. And, Counting your money. Yeah, I'll, I'll then, um, I'll then, I'll then watch a movie. But I'm not a good person to watch a film with because I'm always guessing the outcome. Seventy-six. Yeah, Richard, you can't eat. Didn't want to watch a movie because just talked over it the whole time. Oh, he's gone for the tops, tops as well. We saw Gary Blades do that. Well, the way he's been hitting them, I don't blame him. Forty. A little bit safer than Gary, but Gary Blades fully attacked it where yeah. Richard North going for like the bottom wire just to guarantee the the singles still give you the opportunity to win the leg. Yeah, he was 44. playing safe. Richard wasn't Ugar, it? 40. Well, this is a, a disaster for Nathan because he's going to put himself in a world of trouble in terms of leg difference. Game shot on the third leg. Richard North. There's only one player in this game at the moment. That's Richard North. Nathan Gervin and Richard North came into this dead level. Plus Four one leg each, both on on. four points. We actually thought there might have been a bit of value here in terms of Nathan Gervin. But that is judging on the basis of yesterday's performances and the expectation that he had to find that level at some point. 100. It's just not happening for him tonight. The main thing is, though, he's got some points on the board. Four points. He will end. The evening, even in defeat here, if it was to go that way. 58. You would stay inside the top three, which are your qualifying positions. That is ultimately One the biggest goal 14. for the players. Everyone wants to win the group, but the priority, getting through to Saturday night, that's 100. when the big bucks are dished out. £5,000. Is better from one hundred and forty to back one forties. One hundred. Nathan Carl, one hundred and twenty one. Forty eight. He's yet to have a, a double in this match. But you feel he's going to get plenty at it in this one. Seventy three. Good thinking there, Richard North. He's himself the biggest out. He might have to go twenty bull here. Forty eight. Richard Ducar one hundred and seventy. This has been a solid performance from Richard North. This would be the perfect way to cap it off. Sixty. Nathan Ducar twenty five. Game shot on the fourth leg, Nathan Gervan. Nice, clean finish there from Nathan Gervan. He just 
make you feel a whole lot better when there's just no drama. Fifth leg reaches to third first. Game on. Eighty-three. He's got to find something here on the Richard North throw. Sort of feel eighteen darts or North. He would be plenty to get this one done. So Gervan will have to be looking sort of fifteen or less here. You feel to get an opportunity. One hundred to extend this game into a sixth leg. One hundred. That's a good one right in the corner. Ninety-eight the just really opens up the bed. And while ever he's hitting a treble a shot, he's forcing Gervan to have to hit a big two treble combination. One hundred. Like for likes, not enough when you're trying to break. 140. Really needs a big treble with this last one. 41. He's in big trouble 80. here. Richard North, 80. He's been finding tops well. And he should. Oh, he's found it as part of his Game setup play. It's two Richard doubles North. in the end. Nathan Gervin was already on his way. He expected Richard North to wrap that up. And Richard North ends the night with a very solid performance. A 92.12, 50% checkout. And our first Tumplus checkout of the night, the 116. And that ends Richard North's night in second place in the table. Indeed it does. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. Chris Mason has made his way up to the balcony to reflect on what we've seen this year. Let's begin with that last match because Richard North has saved his best performance up until last. Yeah, it was, it was a tidy performance. Nathan sort of started the evening well and looked like he was going to continue that sort of unbeaten run and seemed to lost, he lost his way against Alex Spellman, who, don't get me wrong, was, was outstanding and... Just looked a little bit wounded in, in in that match there. So, I don't know, maybe a bit of fatigue. Who knows? But he's going to have to come out tomorrow and perform a lot better than he performed tonight. As to Alex Spellman, the perfect night. For the second time this week, he's gone through the card unbeaten. Yeah, but, and by far the best player of the, of the group of five here this evening. And, yeah, he's, he, he just seems to keep impressing. Just when you think, well, has he reached his ceiling? He... He comes out and performs at a really high level. And, you know, he had a disappointing start to the night, average sort of mid-80s in the opening game, but an overall running average in excess of 90, despite a poor start to the night in terms of average, but not result. That's what he does better than pretty much anybody else I've seen this week. He, can, he doesn't mind winning ugly. He, it's all about the points. Well, let's have a look then at the table, at the halfway point here in Group B. It is Alex Spellman, as we mentioned, who leads the way on eight points and that plus ten in terms of legs difference. One win for tomorrow, that would be good enough for him. Yeah, I mean, eight points is, is pretty much sort of what we, the, the projection we look at in terms of enough to qualify in a normal group. And, and like you say, uh, he's going he's gonna to come out tomorrow, win his opening game of the session. Um, uh, and that'll be that done and dusted. And then it's for the rest of the field to battle it out. Does it feel like a three-way fight for two spots between North Girvan and Mould? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 it's good. I mean, the beauty of this group, you're never really out of it. You know, if, he, if Gary Blades comes out tonight and win, uh, tomorrow night and wins four out of four, he qualifies. Indeed. Well, that's going to be our focus again tomorrow night from 10 o'clock. We're going to be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. for the conclusion of Group C, where it's Alexander Merckx who's the man in the attendance C. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's done pretty much exactly what uh, Spellman's done this evening. And he looked outstanding today. And again, the player of the group, the, the two players of the group, rightly top both tables and all to play for tomorrow. I think it's time for bed, isn't it? <sighs> It'd be nice to get a little bit of sleep. Let's get a little bit of shot time. We're going to do it all again tomorrow. It's another double dosage of darts here at the Moda Super Series. We are back with you from 1 o'clock on the Super Series YouTube channel. 3 p.m. for those of you joining us here on Sporty Stuff TV. As far as Group B is concerned, well, Alex has had all the spells. He's the man at the top. <laughs>